Hi there, good morning everybody. Thank you for joining us for this AEC Workflow webinar. My name is Billy Sherrod. Um, as, as per always, we will of course be presenting a recording of today's webinar on our website. So for those of you who want to wish to share with others, or again, just sit through the session again, um, feel free to do so. It'll be available on our website under the Insights tab. Um, the only exclusions we put are the Q&As. There will be a Q&A at the end of this session, of course. We won't be providing those as part of the recording. Sometimes it's a little bit off if we uh, do it out of context. Now, before we begin, a little bit about Excitec itself. Um, we've been serving the AEC industry for over 30 years, and as an Autonomous Platinum partner, we've been supporting our customers, not just with their software needs, but within the IT, consultancy, document management, training, consultancy, and facilities management. Uh, a quick note, you may well notice some animal imagery for our presentation. Uh, this, is, this represents our brand ethos in the close relationships we hold with our customers under the basis of symbiosis. With that, what I'll do is I'll pop onto the agenda and I'll hand over to our consultant, Mr. Paul Grimston. Thank you. Thanks, Billy. Right, welcome to the webinar that we're going to run through. So our agenda is to come and have a first have a quick introduction to our AEC collection. So that's that's where we're beginning with. And then we're going to be picking out three of the products out of the collection. So first one's going to be AutoCAD. Um, we're going to have a look through how we can utilize AutoCAD with the existing survey data, but taking it through into some of our other products there. Um, the second one is Formit. So we're going to take our CAD data and bring it into Formit and then just create some matching. And if, if you've not seen this program, I, I recommend having a look at it. It's, it's quite a, a good sort of workflow and interface to use for this early stage modeling. But the nice thing about this format is it then takes us straight through into Revit. So our workflow is going to be to start with AutoCAD, take some data through into Formit, and then inside of Revit, we're going to take the original AutoCAD data as well as the Formit model, bring it all together, and then start to uh, create some sort of forms and uh, data from there. So, And then at the end of that, we'll have some questions. So I, th I think the best way to share those is just to put those into the chat box as we go through, and then we can pick those up as we go along, um, and we'll provide some answers at the end. So moving on, um, the AEC collection. That's uh, it's, a, it's fairly new. It's been around for a couple of releases, I guess. Um, it moved on from the building design suite. Um, we've got over 20 plus products in there. So if, if you're used to using just the one main product, your AutoCAD or your Revit, um, then this is a whole suite of products there uh, that allows us to kind of go through all sorts of workflows. And, it, and it's kind of a really good way of getting into all of the software. Today we're going to be looking at these three. So we've got AutoCAD Formit. Formit Pro is, is the version that comes with the AEC collection and, and Revit as well. Um, just as a note for the AEC collection, you get all of those versions of AutoCAD. So I think there's probably about 10 of them going through in there. So we get the, um, the sort of map 3D and the raster design and the electrical, mechanical and all of the mobile apps as well, plus the main AutoCAD we can actually use on Windows or Mac, which might be useful for some people. Um, some of the other software that we get, so Navisworks, 3ds Max, Dynamo, so these are things that we might be using pretty much every day once we're into the BIM workflow, Navisworks Manage for all the clash detection, 3ds Max for our visualization. But we get lots more as well. There's just lots and lots. We get the civil 3D, the structural analysis, the infra works. We get the recap, the Revit Live. So there's there's just a huge amount of stuff inside the AEC collection. And, and really, what the purpose of our webinar today, and, and we're doing a series of these, is just to highlight some of the sort of workflow between the products in there. Um, so I, I think I don't know if anyone was on the one the other week, which was looking at the infrastructure side of things. And I know we've got one coming up later on that's going to be looking at the structure engineering side of things as well. So we'll kind of show you some details for that one later on. So our first product is AutoCAD. Um, hopefully everybody knows AutoCAD. It's been around for, well, I think, over 30 years now. Um, certainly gone through a lot of um, releases and updates, and it, it kind of looks very different, although it's um, still 
very much uh, the kind of main software that people use. We still get an awful lot of uh, legacy data. You know, having been around for 30 years, there's millions and millions of CAD drawings floating around that we still need to use and uh, work with. And it's also one of the main formats, the DWG format is one of the main formats for sharing data. So what we find is these kind of OS data, the master map data, and a lot of surveys, they tend to be delivered in DWG. Um, and the nice thing about that, and one of the workflows that we've all been used to for many, many years is that with AutoCAD, we've got a limitless sort of drawing area, and we can just work inside those correct coordinates. And then using things like XREFs, we're able to just bring things in at zero, zero, and it all sits in place nicely, and everything gets nicely coordinated. And that's still something that I find some clients um, struggle to achieve a little bit inside of some of the BIM workflows. Um, so getting that data coordinated and, and getting the right um, setting out and survey points to deliver data. And then actually using that across different products um, can be one of those things that's quite tricky. So what, what I'm going to say, to, to show some of these workflows, um, because some of them take a little bit of time, we've kind of pre-recorded it um, so that we can sort of not just literally sit there and watch people draw in lines all morning. So we're just going to move on to uh, the next one here. And this is just a, a quick video. It's a few minutes just to sh show through the workflow of creating the AutoCAD data. So this is our original drawing file. We can see here we've got some sort of survey lines. These come from the OS grid. And now CAD drawing is at the correct coordinates. Um, it, it's delivered in meters. You know, if, if we're working on a building design, often we're, we're working in millimeters, so we need to remember that. But inserting the blocks in there, you know, they come in, they know exactly where they are, they deliver us our, our coordinates. And that's been the sort of cornerstone of, of the workflow in CAD for many years now. And this is kind of one of the things that we're trying to get back to grips with in, inside of the BIM workflow. So this, this being our site, I've just put that sort of block on the corner there to identify our coordinates. But what we want to do for this, for the workflow into format, is actually reference our site drawing into a new CAD drawing. So starting a blank file there, we want to match the units up because that helps us later on. Um, but then we just come along and we just reference in the original planning site drawing there. Now, we're going to have to move it and manipulate it. So we get it in at zero, zero, and then we're just going to grab hold of it and move a known point. And this is the, the, the key to the workflow, if you like. We need to use a known point. So we, we want to take that known point that we selected there, which is one of those grid intersections, and just drop that down at zero, zero. So then we can see that that's uh, now sat on the origin there of our UCS. And then next thing I'm going to do is, um, is just rotate that around because you know we don't really want to be working at that angle all of the time. So we're going to rotate a key line. And so for, for Revit users, this is kind of setting up our local, what we call our project north. Um, but we're doing this obviously inside of an AutoCAD workspace. So in the original drawing, because we've XREFed it in, if we make any changes to that original drawing, we just reload it into this local version of it. Um, so that means we've got our original one in the correct coordinates that we need for coordinating and generating setting out. And then we've also got a local version of it. So we just save that as the planning site local that we can then take forward and start to use in our format and in other sort of software as well. And that, that's kind of a good tip for you if anyone's out there is when you're working with the BIM workflows, always have like a local setting out point because that's that's going to help out coordination with, with other software that doesn't necessarily have the same coordinate space. So that's the quick part of our AutoCAD workflow. Um, again, tips and tricks really for when you're doing this, turn off any layers you don't want to see, make sure things are clean, do a zoom extents, um, and make sure that there's not some stray sort of objects sitting miles away from the origin that, that might trip us up later on. So we need a nice clean CAD drawing when we take it forward. And then on to our next stage of the workflow, Autodesk Format. Um, now this has been around for a, a while as well. Originally it was, um, created as a as a app for the iPad 
um, which is kind of really interesting. It was really good to use on there. It's also been bought in as a as a web version, so that you're able just to use something like Google Chrome and, and just log on to the Formit website and, and run it through the web browser, which is uh, again a, an interesting way of working. It, it kind of gets around any platform issues of Macs and Windows and everything else in there. Um, with our AEC collection, we get access into the Windows desktop version of it. So that's that's why the, the Windows has been highlighted in red there. The, the, the desktop version that we're going to use is only available through the AEC collection. Okay, but you can still use the format um, on, on the web and the, on the iPad without the collection there. But we also, with the collection, um, we get a few extra features. So we get what, what's known as the pro version. So that starts to give us some sort of analysis tools in there and some collaboration tools. So they're, they're really good to explore as well. The nice thing about it is we can import DWGs into here, and we can also take our format model forward into Revit. And that's the kind of workflow that we're, we're showing today, if you like. So it's kind of really useful program. The other thing about it is the interface is very, very simple. So again, let's kind of launch this one and get this one going. So, so the interface, as you can see there, it's, it's much, much simplified. Um, makes it a lot easier for people that want to do sort of matching studies but don't really want to deal with the, the, the sort of big uh, Revit interface. And all we're doing here is just importing in our local DWG. So this is the one where we've referenced it in and then moved it down to zero. And we can see that that now just comes in and lines up with our origin points in Formit as well. But being a CAD drawing there, we've still got access to the layers so we can turn off some of those things that we don't want to see. And then for this sort of process, I'm going to turn off the grid in the background um, because that kind of makes it a bit of a cleaner drawing interface for me. Now, the tools we can see here over on the right, we've just got simple kind of 2D sketching so we can draw out rectangles and things. And just by tapping on the tab key, we can be accurate and start to generate some sort of shapes and things. And then we're just using the right click menu a lot of the time. I will then to sort of run through, rotate the shape around. Okay, so we can, so it feels when you first start using Format that it's quite um, a sketchy tool and, and can we really be accurate with it? it? It takes a little bit of learning, but yes, you can be accurate with that. We, we're putting things into right, the right sizes, the right dimensions. But we're still just using very, very simple tools. You know, we've got our snaps in there. It's easy to get perpendicular to the CAD drawing and then sort of measure and dimension away from the CAD drawing. And just lining up with what we've already got, it feels like a very intuitive way of working. Um, and again, being able to do this on an iPad or something with the, with the stylus and what have you can make it feel um, much more sketching like rather than um, using a CAD program. So sketched out a few shapes. We'll just move that one down there from our boundary. And then this is done in the 2D plan. We can switch it into sort of 3D mode so that we're then orbiting around. And then it's a, a bit like one of the competitor's products where we can just pick on it and drag it up. And again, just type it into sort of accurate dimensions just to grab some blocks in there. Now, one of the features that's quite nice is we can actually start to add some floor plates, some levels in there and then grab these blocks and switch the levels on. And then this gives us our area per level with a, with a total square meterage up there, which is quite a nice thing as we can stretch and pull it around and sort of see the effects that's having on total area. And then we've also named those blocks as well. So that, that comes in handy for us a little bit later on. And then just really, this, this isn't really a, a training video on how to use Format, so we're not going to get too complicated with it, but it's just sort of running through, showing you some of the kind of functionality that um, you, you get with Format. And let's say if, if you've been sort of using SketchUp or something like that for a while, then this kind of feels quite familiar. Um, but again, it's, it's kind of free as part of that AEC collection, so it, it's definitely something that's worthwhile having a play with. Um, also have a look at the, the, the gallery. So if you um, go through onto the Format website, just you know Google Autodesk Format, um, 
and there's some great sort of blogs some videos and tutorials and things on there um, to get into this but as you can see it's kind of nice and simple interface um, there are some more complex tools in there so we, we can sort of start to loft and uh, create you know more curved shapes and you know something a bit more sort of dynamic and interesting um, and they, they all appear on this sort of right click menu or on the on the sort of easy tools at the top there so I think we're just going to put some rounded corners on here and this kind of thing is, is really really simple to you know produce lots of versions of it then because we can do a, do a save as and then just start again we've got layers where we can turn things on and off we could go in more detail we could start to paint materials and things like that um, but for this purpose we're going to keep it like that and then we've just saved it as a local copy so quick recap we've gone into AutoCAD we've got our original survey drawing which is in the correct coordinates and we've just created a local copy of that by x it into a new drawing and then moving it down to the origin rotating it around to suit Autodesk format we've taken that local copy and imported it in and then we've just started to work within that so that gives us our boundary and our site to work in and then we started to sort of go through and, and generate the mass in let's say that that's got some um, quick tools to check on areas so we can kind of do some quick checks and make sure it's sort of meeting the, our, the needs of our brief in terms of um, square meterage and everything else in there um, but it's a very very simple interface very quick to use we don't have to learn the full Revit sort of massing tools um, and it's ideal for use, of, use on the move as well so if you're stuck on a train or on a plane or something like that you can use it on the iPad and it, and it all still links up and works and that's, that's really good to, to use so then moving forward we get into Revit um, so Revit is our I think the, the Autodesk term is our hero product that's kind of our, our main thing that um, most people use that's the day in day out using it sort of eight hours a day as it were um, and that's where we're going to produce most of our data from so this is our tool that's producing our drawings and producing our schedules and uh, we want to use this to create the, the sort of more detailed models and move forward from that so it's our industry standard at the moment that's kind of where I spend most of my time going around clients helping out with Revit projects um, and really what we want to do the, the the sort of the, the industry challenge that I see most at the moment is this early stage design because the, the people that are involved in that they don't want the, the weight of Revit to contend with um, so this is where this workflow comes in nicely of being able to use our format sort of simple interface to create some masses and then bring it across into Revit and then we get the advantage of all of our sort of parametric driven stuff all of our schedules creating all of the views drawings and all of that ability to sort of instant revise and, and have all of our drawings and schedules update also things like our design options so we could bring in sort of many different format models into different options and, and start to study and compare those as well and then from Revit taking it forward into things like the uh, the Revit live or the Autodesk uh, interactive tools or equally 3ds max just for a sort of high-end visualization so it, it becomes the middle of our workflow before we then move it on to other programs in there so we've got a few videos here just going through how to set that up so the first one is to bring our AutoCAD drawing in so starting in a, in a blank Revit project we're going to go into our, our site view which is where our coordinate markers are so those those two blue markers in there that that's the project base point and then also the survey point and it's the survey point that we want to set up so we get the correct coordinates and it's straightforward we're just going to bring our original AutoCAD drawing in not the local one but the one that's in the correct coordinates check the settings make sure the units are specified as meters and then we're just going to bring it into the center and then that's just going to sit in and we're going to kind of do the same process then we're going to take our CAD drawing and actually sort of rotate it and move it around so we're just going to use that same sight line to rotate horizontal as we did in AutoCAD and then shift it from the same grid intersection so we're kind of replicating that workflow that we did in AutoCAD inside of Revit and we're just going to put that on our project base point so that's our local setting out point now the next bit so yeah 
quick tip, make sure we pin that in place so that it doesn't move once we've done the rest of this. Um, but essentially what we do now is we just come along and we gonna get the coordinates out of that. So a little bit of tidying up, turn some layers off so it's kind of a bit cleaner for us. But then we just go into our manage tab and then we'll tidy it and, and then we'll acquire the coordinates from that. So just to show that working at the moment, we're gonna put a, a coordinate marker in on the corner of our site. So we've, we've still got that block there from the from the CAD drawing that we inserted. So we're gonna come along and just put ourselves in a spot coordinate. And at the moment, this is telling us, so that these are in millimeters, and that's how many millimeters we are away from our current project base point for this, for this site point in here. So in order to, to show it properly, we're just gonna swap those over to meters. So just sort of editing the, the family type. And then once that's sorted out, we just need to go and acquire our coordinates. So under the Manage tab there, click Acquire Coordinates, and then just select the CAD drawing. And then it just jumps in and gives us the same readings. And that's kind of the, the, the simplest way to set those coordinates up. So our triangle's moved, um, and that's disappeared off down to zero, zero. And we've got our true north. So if, if anyone's worried about me rotating the CAD drawing, it, basically what that does before I acquire the coordinates from it, is it sets up the project north for me and then um, when we acquire the coordinates that sets the true north and the project north as we want it. Okay, so we'll get rid of that line there and then that's our sort of file set up ready for us to go. So we're just back in our ground floor view, we're just going to turn those layers off and then we're ready to start working on that. So we, we've got our shared coordinates set up that that's the kind of term that we, we tend to use most on there um, and that's now ready for us to go through and start to build up our model and all the while we, we know that we've got the correct coordinates to work in okay so once we're there um, the second stage then is just to start to bring in the format model so back in that same file on our add-ins tab there, we've got the format tools and we just go bring that in. That's from our local drive and there's no, no options. It just sits in the right place because we've used the workflow, we've set up the local drawing and we've set up the coordinates inside of Revit. It just comes into the right place. Okay. We can see it's got our block A and block B. So where we name those inside of um, format, that's brought that through. Um, there's a couple of little bits that we just need to get working so we're going to switch the masses on anyone familiar with Revit knows that the masses don't show straight away and then we're just going to make those a bit transparent so we can work with them a little bit easier so we've brought those through uh, we can see it's already got the levels so those levels that we created inside of format they've come through uh, we can see the floor plates there I'm just clearing out the the CAD drawing and something else from that that's come through from format and then it's all good to go. Okay, so straight away without doing anything else in there, we can um, start to use this data. One of, one of the things that we kind of encourage people to have a bit of a look at, so it's brought those levels through from format um, and they weren't named quite the way we want them. Um, so using Dynamo simple script rather than sort of work our way through all, all sort of eight or nine of those levels to rename them, we've just got a simple script that you click play so the Dynamo player is a great thing. Um, and it takes a second or two and it just goes and renames all of those views to suit or all of the levels to suit. Okay, so that's nice and quick. And then we can generate some floor plans for all of those levels. So all of this data has come through from format. Um, we're not having to go and recreate any of that inside of Revit. It's all just there live. And then inside of those floor plans, we can see the slices through of where our masses are going through those levels. And then again, just sort of still using the data from format, we've got the mass floors that have come through. So we can go and schedule those out straight away. Again, not, not having to do anything extra to that. So we just make ourselves a schedule, find the mass floors, and then we're just gonna quickly add in. So we just want the um, 
the, the mat itself, so block A, block B, the floor level, and then we want the area of that floor. And then we're just going to go sort that out so it, it groups it according to each block. And then we're looking to create some totals as well. So let's kind of give us a, a total area of the whole of both blocks in one. And we just need to go through and tell that so that our floor area then actually calculates a total that always catches everybody out. And then straight away, we've got a, a, a schedule in there. So block A and block B are separated out. We can see the total for each one and then a grand total at the bottom. And again, we can then take that forward. We can do more calculation on that. We could take that out into Excel if we needed to, to do some more sort of analysis on that. And that kind of works quite well for us. So that part of the workflow, bringing in our original CAD drawing, that's got the correct coordinates in it, setting up those coordinates um, in Revit. So obviously moving, rotating, and, and getting our local set and out point and our, our local orientation. That means that our format model can just come and sit in exactly the same place. We don't need to sort of do anything special with that. It just drops in and works for us. And then we can sort of use that, reuse that data inside of Revit. So at, at no point are we having to redraw, remodel, do anything like that. It's just a kind of seamless step through. So building that up, then we've got um, a little bit of a workflow that allows us to develop this model a little bit more. So this is purely a kind of Revit thing. And this is where we're, um, we've created a couple of little parametric blocks, basically, that within our kind of floor plates, we can now start to build up a, a kind of more of a unit plan, if you like. So just by sort of dropping those in, we can then start to put it in sort of individual apartments. So, you know, if this is like a block of apartments, block of flats, then, you know, we, we've obviously got total areas of the, the entire floor, but now we can actually start to block out individual apartments. And these are just sort of simple rectangles, if you like, that are stretchable. So we've made them parametric. We've got some proper dimensions in there where we can just type those in and get accurate sizes. And we've also got a, a parameter at the bottom down there that gives us the area of that apartment. So that one there I can see is 105. Um, and then it's just the normal sort of CAD tools. So again, if, if you can get these kind of families set up, then again, it's very simple for someone with, with not, um, you know, you don't need a huge amount of Revit experience to be able to drop these blocks in and rotate them around and, and just start to generate some kind of um, plan as we need it. So I'm not going to make you watch me do all of that. So we're going to jump the videos forward a little bit. Um, and just a, a bit of a workflow. So where we've got, you know, non rectangular shapes, as it were, we're just going to use this kind of model in place. So it, we, I'm just using the sort of generic model tool. And then we can offset from the blocks that we've already got or from the actual mass that we've bought in from format. So again, remember, those lines have come straight through from format. And it's just sort of sketching around, and we're getting the you know the, the custom shapes, the the awkward bits that don't quite fit a nice rectangle or an L or something like that. And it just allows us then to you know really sort of fill it all in and and, and get some some of the more I guess interesting complex designs together. Okay. And whilst we're doing this, thinking about doing this in 3D, uh, these these blocks and, and the extrusion there, we're just sort of saying, well, if, if, you know, if we've got a, a three and a half meter floor to floor, then we're leaving a, a bit of a zone for our sort of structural floor slabs and any services or anything like that that needs to go in. And then we've also got a sort of simple material. So working through that, we, we've laid out our sort of ground floor. And then if you're not familiar with some of the Revit tools, we can just sort of select our ground floor blocks there and use our nice sort of copy and paste and paste it into the floors above. And then go through and start to sort of work those ones out. So we've got a slight overhang on the first floor. So it's quite quick just to come and change and stretch these things around. OK. And being able to swap from the sort of rectangular shape to the L shape, so because they're all just families, it's kind of nice and quick to, you know, if we need a an L shape in there or an S shape, we can always sort of preset some of those sort of easy shapes to do, and then um, 
go through and um, you know, copy those out and change it through. So again, just pasting those up to the rest of the floors. And then we can then sort of keep working our way through, building that up. Again, we can use things like design options for alternatives. So if, if we need to sort of have different variations of it, we want to try out different sort of combinations of unit. Again, we won't sort of go through the whole process, but we ended up with our kind of block model going through in there. So developing that forward, we, we won't sort of do it all live in here, but that, that leads us on to having our individual apartment or unit types in there, you know, whether it was for educational stuff, they could be classrooms. If it's for um, healthcare, they could be walls and different rooms. Um, it could be hotel room, so so whatever kind of development it is that you're that you're creating in there it is quite a sort of good workflow. And what we've done is we just added some simple parameters, and those might be around department or occupancy or tenure or you know whatever it is that suits your development in there. And then that allows us then to start to create those sort of schedules. We can color code the three D views. We can pull out plans that are, again are just color coded, and it gives us. Um, for an early stage sort of feasibility conceptual design, it, it means we've got a nice quick workflow. So original drawing in CAD, that may be a legacy drawing that we've had from a long time ago that, you know, or a survey that was done or something, you know, an existing building that's there. Um, set that up as a local one, bring that into format. That's where we can just do some sort of mass models. We can do some you know, different views, we can share that easily, collaborate inside a format, produce lots of different variations, but all the while we're doing that, we're getting sort of areas, we're getting things that we can check and make sure that it's going to be usable and worthwhile, it's not just random block modeling. Um, but equally, we know it's not wasted, we can take that through into Revit and start to develop that a little bit more. Um, we can then use some of our families and then use the power of Revit with its sort of parametrics and all of its views so we can start to create plans, drawings, schedules, we can tag things. And equally, we can then take that forward, whether we um, use the inbuilt processes or whether we use Dynamo or some of the add-ins that we've got, we can take that forward into um, things like Excel to do more calculations. And equally, we can use things like the Revit Live or the 3ds Max to do sort of more uh, higher end or you know more bespoke visualizations with, with things like the Revit Live we can publish the models out inside of Revit itself once we're happy with that we can then start to develop the model we can start to add in walls and curtain walling and replace some of these blocks with the, the party walls and start to develop up actual apartment types or room types or whatever it is and just use that as a as a nice clean continuous workflow all the way forward okay um and that i think starts to get towards the end of our workflow okay so yeah just as a as a quick summary have a look through that aec collection there's a lot of products in there um it's there to meet the challenges that we have so you know if, if the challenge is we, we need something a bit simpler, easier, and more flexible, have a look at format. If we need data in a different way, maybe Dynamo does it. Use things like Navisworks if you're just working in Revit all the time and you're having to reference in structural models, m and &E models, other consultants' models. Just open them up in Navisworks and, and you can have a really good, quick view through to see of any coordination issues that are going to be um, a little bit more difficult to see once you've got it into Revit. So, you know, make use of all of those tools. Um, 3ds Max for the visualization is fantastic tool to have, um, and just yeah, really, really sort of look at all of those tools and see if you can utilize them to to make it easier for you guys. That's that's really what they were there for, is to kind of make your your working life a bit easier. Um, so yeah, we've gone through our questions. Is um, just to publicise our, our next one. So 10th of September, same time, 11 o'clock, um, we've got Lawrence Hooker, one of my esteemed colleagues at XI Tech. He's going to take us through um, the sort of a similar AEC workflow using the collection tools there for structural engineers. So tune into that one. Um, that, I'm sure that one will be a good one too. And um,
Thanks for tuning in.